Thank you all for being here today. We're really excited about the next few hours of discussion about the electronic health record. Now, topics like the EHR, you know, when you see a conference on the EHR, you expect it to begin with gloom and doom because a lot has been written and much will be said today about the problems and challenges of the EHR. But I want to start with describing the bad old days before the EHR. When, when I was a resident, I can't begin to count the number of times that I had to call security at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning to open a faculty member's office because there was a radiology study or there was a chart that we were trying to track down for a surgical procedure that was going to start at 7 a.m or the number of patients that I saw in the emergency department who had been treated at the academic medical center where I was on many previous occasions, but the chart just couldn't be located. And then the number of medication errors that we saw and the disastrous consequences of those errors because a dosage had been miscalculated or a decimal point had been moved or it hadn't been realized that the patient was on two medications that had known adverse side effects when given together. Now each of those today is far, far less common than it was before the advent and the usage of electronic health records. It's also helpful to realize that the High Tech Act was, became effective on in February of 2009, that's just 10 years ago. And we've moved during that relatively short period of time, given that we're talking about the US healthcare delivery system, we've moved from being a delivery system that was overwhelmingly paper to one today that's overwhelmingly electronic. But in a lot of ways, what we've done is to switch from paper filing cabinets, filing cabinets from paper, to electronic filing cabinets. And it's good to have electronic filing cabinets for all the reasons I just mentioned. The charts are available at 2 a.m. Uh, when a patient comes into the emergency departments. The radiology studies are online and accessible, certainly in the hospital and increasingly from uh, remote sites as well through portals that enter into the radiology system. So all of that and medication errors have been dramatically reduced, at least medication errors that are due to miscalculations or other mistakes that humans are wont to make. Uh, and EHRs have improved our performance on that. But still, we haven't leveraged the capabilities of data science and artificial intelligence. And we haven't made these electronic data repositories interoperable and interchangeable in ways that we know we can do. We know we can do it because we've done it in every other sector of the economy. The way we order goods and services, the way we perform financial transactions are all radically different today than they were 10 years ago. And yet still today, when you type in information in the chief complaint line of a standard EHR system, you rarely get decision support about what that complaint may signal in terms of the diagnosis. When you complete a new patient record in a complicated patient that you've just seen in your clinic, you rarely get a comparator to patients from a database that includes millions of other patients as to what the likely diagnosis is and what the likely treatment modalities, given the individual characteristics of that patient, what treatment modalities would be most likely to be more effective. We can do better than that, and we will. So this is a conference about optimism. This is a conference about the future. This is a conference about bringing us all together to plan the future and then act upon it. We've seen other changes that have been complex and that have resulted in massive societal improvement. In the 1880s, the United States had two different gauges of rails for our rail system. Not surprisingly, it was the 1880s, differed between the North and the South. And then, in one month, beginning in one month in 1886, a massive amount of 
human effort and labor was devoted to moving the gauge, moving the rails of the tracks in the south three inches to match the tracks in the north, and of retrofitting the railway cars and other devices that go on the rails. And in a relatively short period of time, we went from a nation that did not have a connected rail system to a transcontinental rail system, and the radical change in transportation in our, in our country in the latter part of the 19th century from railways. Now that occurred because there was a collective decision that we had to do it for the good of society. And in a more recent example, many of us in this room can remember the time when we did not have a World Wide Web, when we didn't have an internet. And it was four institutions, Stanford being one, that came together and said, we want to connect our computers. And from that grew the ARPANET, then the internet, and today the, con the connectivity that we all take for granted. Now, I'm not being naive and suggesting that making electronic health records interoperable or connected is the same as making information about the weather or other more commonly available information widely disseminated. There are absolutely legitimate important concerns about privacy and about who should have access and how access should be protected. But we should be able to address and affirm those concerns and protect privacy and still make health records more interoperable and very importantly, make them more searchable in a way that we can derive information from the vast amounts of data that now are in an electronic format. And that's the goal of today's session, is to discuss the ways that we can come together to accelerate this transformation. I'm confident it's going to occur. And I think it's going to occur because of people in this room today and people like you around the country. If there's one guiding principle that I think we should all keep in mind is that we want to do what's right by our patients. And what's right by our patients is for each of us as physicians to be able to learn from patients like ours. For each of us as physicians to be able to get the type of real-time assistance in diagnosis and treatment modalities that we know can be achieved. This is not a problem of algorithm development. It's a problem of bringing information together, making it interoperable, and then applying the type of algorithms that need to be applied to derive the information. There's never been a more exciting time to be in biomedicine and healthcare than today. And I think the challenges that we face with the electronic health record are really fundamentally opportunities. There's some hurdles we have to overcome, but I'm absolutely confident that we can and we will overcome them because of the great work done by you and so many of your colleagues. I now want to welcome the first panel to the stage. The first panel is really focused on how electronic health records can serve the needs and better be equipped to interface with patients, the people that we all serve. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.